What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. And I'm back. I finally am back to do a review for Common's Nobody's Smiling album. It's been a long time since I've done a review because frankly, there hasn't been anything that's come out that's been interesting to me since Absol's these days. I mean, there's been a lot of mixtapes and albums to come out, like there has been stuff to come out, but nothing that I really cared enough to want to do a review for. But thankfully, it looks like things are going to pick up here in the next couple of months as far as hip-hop releases go, so I should be able to get back into a regular rotation. Anyway, this album, Nobody's Smiling, it was a bit of a disappointment to me, honestly. I, I do like it, first of all, so don't, you know, don't go crazy in the comments, call me a hater, whatever. I do like the album. I do like Common as an artist, but I just expected more from this album. I guess, at, having listened to it for the past couple of days, because the leak came out, and the, a bunch of singles have been out, you, you've been able to stream it for a while now, so, you know, like, I'm not just doing this today because I just heard it today. I took my time with it because I wanted to do a, a proper review. At first, I actually thought, shit, this is a great album. Like, I was ready to give this, like, a 4, 4.5 out of 5. My final score ended up being a 3.5 out of 5. And I'll tell you why. I'll kind of go through some of the songs. First of all, the whole concept of the album is basically, it's basically painting the picture of Chicago and all the things that are going on there in the neighborhood, uh, the shootings, uh, the different troubles that youth in Chicago are facing. And obviously, Common is from Chicago, and he's a bit of an OG, so to speak, so he wants to put his spin on what's going on there. So this, the album starts off with the song Neighborhood, and it's one of the better songs on there. I really like it. It has a Curtis Mayfield sample at the start. James Fauntleroy, I think that's how you say his name, uh, sings a little bit, and then it goes into Commons verse, which is followed by a Little Herb verse, which that really surprised me. I haven't listened to much Little Herb. I thought he was just going to be another sort of drill artist on the scene, because I know I, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure he's associated with Chief Keef and Little Dirk and those guys, at least. I always hear his name mentioned with them, whether he works with them or not. I don't know. I haven't checked much of his music, really. But he surprised me on this. He actually had a better verse than Common, I thought. And it was cool just to see a, a younger guy like Little Herb putting his take on what's going on in Chicago up against Common's take when he's a little bit older. You know, they see the similar things, even though there's that age gap, but they have a little bit of a different take on it as well. The production on it is good, too. It's by No ID, as is the whole album, which, which is interesting because a lot of the beats have a very different feel to it. Uh, one of the songs that's been out for a while that was released was Diamonds with Big Sean. And that song just made me cringe within the first five seconds. Like, I, I, can't, I can't stand Big Sean. I don't understand why Big Sean is being featured on all these songs when Psy High is way better and he's also signed to good music. I don't, I don't get this infatuation with Big Sean, but maybe some of you can explain why you think he's so good. I have heard him have good verses here and there, but on the song Diamonds, it's just, it's, he just ruins the song. It has another good No ID beat, Commons on point. Like, I think this would have been one of my favorite songs on there, if not for Big Sean, but he absolutely ruins it. Within five seconds of the song, it starts off, and he's just like, Oh, welcome with the thing, get the champagne popping, campaign popping. And I just, I go, oh man, this is bad. This is bad. And his verse is terrible. Just As soon as Big Sean comes on the song, it's bad. At every interval where he appears, it just completely ruins the song. Not worth listening to. I don't want to say that. It is worth listening to because the beat's good and comments parts are good, but if someone could make an edit of that with Big Sean taken out, that'd be nice. Another song on there that I didn't like was Black Magic. The beat sort of has an industrial, almost Yeezus feel to it. It has Janae Aiko, Aiko, however you say it on there, but she doesn't really add much of the feel of the track. I don't know. I think if you're into more alternative rap and you like to hear people trying different things, this might be, this might be one of the songs that you do like. You might be able to appreciate the creativity that's going on here, but as far as just sonically, just listening to it, I, I couldn't get into it. I don't like it. The fact that the hook is just her saying black magic over and over like 16 times, which seems to be the theme on a lot of these songs where the hook is just, the hooks are garbage on this album for the most part. There's not really a lot of good ones. Not that you go to a common album for hooks, but I find there's a lot of times where it's just a hook, it's just a line being repeated over and over. Uh, sort of like on the song, I think it's called Hustle Harder or Hustle Hard featuring Dreezy and Snow Allegra. I don't know who, who that is. Uh, Dreezy, I have heard of before. She's a female artist from Chicago, and she killed her verse on Hustle Harder, which is basically just all about girls who hustle harder than niggas. That's what it says on the hook. She hustle harder than a nigga, and then they whisper it. She hustle harder than a nigga. And they repeat it, which, I don't know. It is what it is. It doesn't ruin the song, but it, it, it wasn't a good hook. But the whole song, is, it has a good, hard beat to it. Like I said, Dreezy kills it. Common's verse is on point. I think it's one of the better verses on the album, I thought, as far as the flow goes. It, it's, it's one of the better songs on there. You'll definitely want to check that out. 
Kingdom with Vince Staples is just man. That song is crazy. Has a good video for it too, but focusing on the song, that is one of the best songs that I have heard in 2014 in hip hop music. Just the feel of the beat, it's so grand, it has the choir singing on it, just the instrumentation on there, it almost sounds heavenly, which, you know, the song is called Kingdom, and on the chorus they're saying, please let me into the kingdom, welcome me to the kingdom, whatever it is, but like most of the songs on the album, the theme of this is, again, the stuff that's going on in Chicago, and here Common is painting a picture of what's going on in Chicago with, you know, uh, young people dying, involved in drugs, and just, you know, you know the nar typical narrative that goes on these days with the state of Chicago. Not all of Chicago, but in some of the inner city areas anyway. I can't say too much about that. I'm not from Chicago. I live in Nova Scotia, Canada, but you know what I'm trying to say. Vince Staples killed his verse on there. Vince Staples is one of those guys who, whenever I see him featured on a song, he kills it. He was on uh, Asher Roth's Retro Hash album, and he killed his verse on the song, Fast Life. And again, on Kingdom, he kills it. He's got a lot of great lines, a great flow. Really interested in hearing more from Vince Staples. He's not a guy I check for a lot. So if you can recommend what Vince Staples albums or mixtapes for me to check out, please do. But keeping with Vince Staples, he's also featured on the song Out, Out on Bond. Out on Bond, I think it's called. Uh, and that was one of the low points on the album as well. The beat was very kind of humdrum. It's just a little bit of guitar and bass going on. And I do like the concept. They're just rapping about being out on bond, just kind of describing somebody out on bond, what they look like, what they're doing, what's going on. Cool concept, but it kind of falters and falls short. It doesn't really stick to the ribs. Like, after you listen to it once, you kind of go, oh, okay, I get it. Don't need to hear it again. But there's a lot of other good songs on there. It's definitely an album that I think people are going to appreciate all in all, there are some songs that could, you could probably do without. Young Hearts Run Free is a perfect example of one of the songs that is just kind of there. Like, it's good. I like the vibe of it. It's a little more lighthearted. It almost has a Drakey feel to it because they're singing on it. The beat is kind of mellow. It's, it's something you might kind of just drive around to, taking your time late at night. It has that sort of vibe to it. Like, maybe you're going out on the late night creek to pick a girl up, something like that. Another song that has a feel of just driving, but on a sunny day, like, Tops Down in the Summer is Real featuring Elijah Blake. Real is actually one of my favorite songs on there. Not not that it's crazy lyrically or it's that deep, but I just really like the beat to it. The beat kind of sounds like something like Tupac might have got on back in the day. Sort of like a to live and die in L.A. sort of feel to it. Just smooth and mellow. Elijah Blake is singing on the hook. You niggas ain't real. Something, something, something. It, it's not, like I said, it's not overly crazy lyrical, but just the whole feel of the song is good. It's just kind of watered down and simple. Kind of out of place on the album, I guess you could say, but he had to have something that was a little more commercial and mainstream sounding, so I do appreciate that song for what it is. But one song, I can't believe I forgot to mention this song, Seven Deadly Sins is one of the craziest songs that I've heard in a while. Just the concept of it. I mean, you know what it's going to be about, Seven Deadly Sins, so he's just rapping about lust, greed, envy, wrath, again, tying it into the streets, how these different sins apply to what's going on in the streets, and he did an amazing job with it, and the beat is just sick, man, like, the beat, it kind of sounds like something RZA would produce, like, I was almost waiting for Ghostface Killa, or maybe Jizza to get on here and start spitting bars, once you hear the beat, you'll know what I mean, it sounds like a classic sort of Wu-Tang production, so I really appreciated that song, it took it back to the 90s, great lyricism on there, again, tying sins into the streets, and the beat really complements it. A lot of the beats on here, like I said, they're good. They, they sort of vary throughout. There's a couple that I didn't like. The title track, Nobody's Smiling. I don't know what that beat was supposed to be. It kind of sounded like Mortal Kombat from Sega Genesis. And again, it's sticking with the concept of Chicago and the stuff that's going on. Nobody's smiling because shit is so bleak. Which is cool. You know what? I appreciate when an album is cohesive and tied together like this. But sometimes, after so many listens, you're like, okay, I get it. Like, if every song is about the same thing. You know, you can't really take away points for that, I guess, because cohesion is an important thing, but it does kind of take away from the replay value a little bit, I think, because the variety isn't so much there. That song also features Malik Youssef, and he's doing spoken word on it, which, I don't know, man, I don't like spoken word. Spoken word just makes me feel uncomfortable. I've never liked any spoken word that I've heard before. If you like it, maybe you'll think this is good. Me, I just hear it, and I go, what? I don't need to hear this shit. No disrespect to him. I'm sure he's great at what he does, and people like it. I mean, I know his name, so he's doing more than I am. But I could have done without the spoken word on that track. And the beat, like I said, is just some Sega Genesis Mortal Kombat type of shit. Two more songs to touch on. I kind of have touched on every song, so I may as well finish touching on the other ones that I left out. 
Rewind That is a great song. I really like that. The concept of it is just common rapping about the past. He has some really insightful verses talking about his relationship with No ID. And then he goes into his relationship with Jay Dilla, who helped him craft some of his hits. He goes on, you know, reminiscing about when Jay Dilla got sick, when they used to live together, making music together. It's a really good song to listen to. You get a very good picture of what was going on with all the stuff that he's saying. So that's one of the better songs on there. And the last song, the one that I didn't touch on, again, these songs, I'm just, I'm, I'm not I'm not speaking on them in order. I've just kind of bounced around. That's just how this review ended up, so that's how I'm doing it. Uh, Speak My Peace. I really like that song. I like the beat. It does get a little repetitive after time because all it is mostly is just bass. I almost expected the Yin Yang Twins to come on it and start whispering about their dick, but they didn't. Uh, it has a biggie sample on there. I just speak my peace, keep my peace. I mess it up. Whatever. I'm sorry. Hip-hop fans, shoot me. Uh, it is a good song, though. It's something you probably drive around with. Maybe turn it up. Bumps in the whip as some people might say. Uh, yeah, so that's basically my review on Common's Nobody's Smiling. I think it is still one of the better albums to come out in 2014, but I was really hoping it would be a bit better. Like, I was hoping it would just wash away everything, but to me personally, Sylvia Demo and Black History Project, Isaiah Rashad and Sci High, The Prince's Project, respectively, uh, those are still my two favorite albums of the year. Maybe Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib's Pinata would be up there as well. But this one is behind those ones, but it is in the conversation. I think people could definitely make an argument for this being one of the better albums of the year, and I, I couldn't say no to that. I just think in some parts, you know, it gets a little dry. There are some ups and downs. Like, if you could change a couple of these songs out of there or fix a couple spots, it would have made it a whole lot better. But nobody's perfect. That's what I thought, and nobody's smiling. 3.5 out of 5. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. If you have an opinion to share on this, I would love to hear it. Check out my other reviews and share your opinion. And hopefully there will be some more releases coming out soon for me to do reviews for. I've been busy. My wife just had a baby girl, so that's keeping us on our toes. But I'm off work for a little while, so as long as some albums come out that are interesting, I'll be reviewing them. So until then, thanks for watching. Check out my other videos, and I'll see you next time.